So you like to play with electronics, but you need an instrument to make some measurements. So what do you buy first and what to look for? Follow this video. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Claudio Hitte and this is Hands-on Electronics of Accidental Science. For sure, the first instrument you uh, should buy uh, is uh, something like this. Uh, a multimeter that uh, provides measurements uh, of volts, uh, ampere and ohm, and maybe, as in this case, uh, temperature and the continuity test. And here we have also the test uh, for the um, gain of transistors, but that is not really important. Um, this is quite cheap instrument because uh, it uh, it costs uh, maybe 20 bucks uh, and, and um, as you will see later in the video um, if this is your first instrument uh, uh, maybe you should uh, spend a little bit more I will tell you later in the video why but don't spend too little because I've seen on the market uh, instruments that uh, cost uh, uh, five euros or five dollars I tested one of them and I've seen that uh, the time it takes uh, for the reading is uh, excessive, it makes um, the instruments absolutely useless. Um, consider that in the continuity test, uh, uh, as you can see here and with this instrument, uh, when I touch the probes together, we have uh, an immediate feedback uh, of the continuity test with a beep. Uh, this is important because when you uh, are doing a test of continuity test, uh, you need uh, a immediate feedback uh, between the time, the moment in, in which you touch the, probe, the probes together and the moment in which you get the beep feedback. Uh, otherwise, if it takes longer of your reaction, it would become uh, useless and uh, that instrument uh, uh, was like that <laughs> uh, half a second uh, of delay between the time uh, the, the moment in which you touch the probe together and the moment in which you have the beep feedback that is ludicrous <laughs> and makes the instruments uh, totally useless so mm, don't spend uh, too little, uh, spend uh, a little bit more, but if this is your first instrument, consider to spend a little bit for and more, because um, yeah, you know, this instrument is cheap and uh, it it does it, its job, but uh, uh, you know, its uh, its range uh, in DC voltage starts from 200 millivolt uh, and uh, and reaches. Um, a good uh, value of 600 volt, uh, which is okay. Uh, but in AC, it starts from 200 volt, and uh, and yeah, you would prefer to have something that starts from 10 volts, almost. And the same can be said for the range of current in current. And this instrument also have a fake CE mark. <laughs> oh, okay. And of course, this is a uh, this is an older, an old version, but this this, this is the king of uh, uh, the of the multimeters. Uh, this is a fluke, uh, and this is one of the best instruments uh, you can buy. Of course, they are not cheap. This is an old instrument, but it's still good. I have a couple of stains here, but uh, for the remainder, it's. Uh, in a very good condition and as every instrument uh, it needs uh, periodical calibration but it's still a very good instrument and of course to use the correct uh, the correct uh, mm, chords uh, and uh, here I've <laughs> uh, used the <coughs> not the correct chords uh, because I've lost them often when working on uh, electronic circuits uh, you will want to know how voltages and currents uh, change over time especially in the case of fast charging voltages such as when probing audio amplifiers uh, oscillators motor drivers uh, and digital circuits uh, and in many many other cases 
for this purpose an oscilloscope like this or maybe like this is absolutely necessary technically oscilloscopes gauge voltage only and they plot the voltage variation over time on the screen as you can see here where I'm picking the AC the mains AC noise specialized probes for measuring currents also do exist I don't have one here but there are many other that uh, measure high frequencies high voltage probes with long protective uh, sticks uh, as well as uh, a differential and insulated probes uh, to make re readings uh, on mains uh, without running the risk of frying your instrument or circuit like I have discussed in the previous video that addressed this specific situation if you are interested you will find the link somewhere here or in the description all these probes uh, basically convert current uh, or high non-isolated voltages uh, or even other physical quantities into voltage within the range requirements of your oscilloscope and there are other instruments uh, such as like this one uh, that uh, have a, a combined function uh, uh, both multimeter and uh, and the scope uh, on, on the same instrument which is cool it is portable easy to carry and it is fully isolated so here you don't have to be worried about uh, the possibility of a re of a short uh, uh, between uh, a live uh, wire of the from the mains uh, to ground provided that uh, the instrument uh, has the right category and enough voltage isolation voltage here this is usually the case with this kind of instruments uh, which is a further bonus for a certain kind of uh, measurements um, and uh, in some instruments like this one you also have a function generator that uh, provides signals uh, and you can change uh, uh, for example here you can change uh, the waveform so basically here we have uh, three instruments in one single uh, case many of these these instruments uh, uh, have a, a bandwidth a limited band bandwidth but some are uh, quite decent because you can have instruments that uh, have a bandwidth of 40 megahertz uh, to uh, even uh, 100 or 200 megahertz um, and, uh, and that is a uh, really a good thing but uh, the, the screen is quite small and it, they have uh, some limitations uh, and uh, in a good um, laboratory you should have and rely on a good oscilloscope like this uh, which is preferable um, here you can spend uh, about 200 euros or 200 dollars uh, maybe if for starting uh, with a decent uh, instrument uh, you can purchase an old uh, used instrument uh, provided that is reconditioned and, and calibrated and you can bargain an instrument like this for maybe 50 to 100 bucks and if you are lucky you can find an old uh, used uh, high-end quality uh, instrument like uh, those from HP or Tektronics uh, but again it should be calibrated and reconditioned otherwise it is a beautiful useless piece of steel okay here I have been a little bit radical um, it can be still useful provided you know its accuracy for example with this instrument uh, I carried uh, the maintenance and uh, calibration myself calibration has been carried on with uh, uh, another instrument a better instrument uh, uh, as a reference uh, but the resulting accuracy is less than the uh, original accuracy the instrument had you can buy an instrument like this or maybe something um, cheaper an in a digital instrument uh, even a cheaper e digital instrument like similar to this uh, maybe a two channel uh, and uh, a decent uh, bandwidth you have to budget uh, uh, from i think uh, 250 euros uh, and more an oscilloscope is absolutely necessary in your laboratory so why not using this instrument everything in one single case instead of an oscilloscope 
Well, okay, in a laboratory you need uh, multiple instruments and if you set up a laboratory it is better to have a multimeter and a function generator and the oscilloscope first, the oscilloscope, then the other instruments. Uh, in the case you are uh, in the field uh, to make measurements, uh, well, in that case, maybe an instrument like this is better for you. But for your home uh, small laboratory of electronics, uh, well, then in the case it is better to have a multimeter, a good multimeter, a good multimeter that is important, and uh, a decent, uh, if not good, oscilloscope. And if you are going to be cheap, uh, don't be fooled with uh, things like this. Uh, this is a really cheap uh, oscilloscopes, <laughs> really oscilloscopes, but uh, uh, essentially they are. Uh, don't spend your money, even though uh, yeah, this maybe will cost uh, 30 euros. <laughs> this is 10 euros <laughs> less than a multimeter and uh, don't spend your money for this. Of course if you already have a good instrumentation, uh, maybe a good uh, multimeter, a good oscilloscope, then maybe you can even buy a, a cheap uh, thing like this, which is uh, cheap but not uh, absolutely um, horrible like that uh, like 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 this one <laughs> and um, and this uh, could be useful in the case you have to, you have to get to, to get an idea of the waveform in the field maybe making a measurement in a field in a remote place uh, where you can't uh, carry with you uh, the your uh, laboratory oscilloscope and and then in that case maybe a little instrument like this uh, could be useful and <laughs> and really cheap for instance it was useful this uh, this thing um, for it is it is even without any mark it is it is not even branded <laughs> it doesn't have have any mark it is really <laughs> okay uh, for instance, an instrument like this uh, it could be useful in certain particular cases. Uh, maybe you have to um, send a technician in a remote place, uh, you have to take a, a plane, fly uh, for, uh, for a while and reach uh, a remote country uh, where maybe the customs are not really fr friendly. Well, in that case, you can carry with you a little box like this because it is little it can be easily carried with you and if the customs says your little instrument or maybe it is stolen or maybe you fright on the field in the field well you haven't lost much because it is really cheap so let's see what to look for when you buy an instrument a multimeter in short, the main points to look for are what kind of measurements the multimeter is able to perform, how detailed the measured values are, the accuracy and the limits. Of course, you will want to measure voltage, current, resistance and the continuity test with diode test. Be aware that some instruments have the diode test shared with the resistance measurement such as in this cheap instrument. They provide a voltage of uh, 0.7 volt to let you see the resistance just at the diode threshold, but it also shares regular resistance measurements. This is not that useful. A dedicated diode test have an internal threshold that detects the voltage drop at the diode under test while providing a constant current, which gives a much reliable and faster rating. A temperature probe and maybe the ability to measure capacitance is a bonus. So let's talk about resolution. This is the ability to display finer or coarser values and should relate to precision, even though this is not always the case. 
The resolution is usually related to the number of digits or counts the instrument is able to display. An instrument with 2000 counts is finer than one that has only 1000 counts. In this example, the latter instrument will display values between 0 and 999, while the former will display values between 0 and 1999. The decimal point doesn't matter for this. Normally, the internal resolution, that is the one used by the internal analog to digital converter, should exceed the one displayed. So when the instrument measures a value that is below 1 but greater than 0, it will switch to the lower range, if available. Conversely, when it measures a value that is greater than the maximum count, it changes to the higher range, if available. So having four ranges, say 2, 20, 200 and 600 volt is better than having two ranges, because the accuracy is typically affected by the range. Now let's have a look at the specifications of my old Fluke 75, which is no longer in production. We see that the accuracy is affected by the range in two ways. First, we have the accuracy specified for each range, and secondly, the accuracy is expressed as a percentage of the read value plus a number. This number is the error at the last digit and have to be added to the last digit to compute the actual accuracy for the given range and read value. For example, suppose we are at the 32 volt range. The specifications say that at this range the accuracy is plus minus 0.5 percent plus one and at that range the resolution is 0 0.01 now if the instrument read from an effective source of voltage of 5.0000 volt the accuracy will be 5 volt times 0.5 over 100 which gives 0 0.025 volt or 25 millivolt then we need to add 1 to the resolution ratio. So 1 times 0 0.01 gives 0 0.01 volt or 10 millivolts. The accuracy will be plus minus 25 millivolt plus 10 millivolt or plus minus 35 millivolt. So the actual value could be between 4.965 volt and uh, 5.035 volt and the total accuracy is plus minus 0.7% uh, given by the plus minus uh, 35 millivolt over 5 volt times 100. And the accuracy is typically given with a range of temperature often 18 to 28 degrees Celsius. And within a year since the last calibration at the rated relative humidity of the air. One other important point to look for is the number of readings over time, usually indicated as a counts per seconds or readings per seconds or just a number of a second. The Fluke 75 specification simply states less than one second. A more recent model from the same brand says, for example, the full 6000 counts are updated four times per second as digital number, while the 32 segments representing analog levels are updated 10 times faster. One other important information is input impedance. But this should be typically 10 mega ohm with 50 to 100 picofarad and uh, the class and maximum voltage the instrument is able to withstand. A class second uh, is just for interior usage and 600 volt is the minimum requirement to work on AC mains rated at 240 volt uh, and it is insufficient aka not safe with higher voltages. So these are the main characteristics to look for when purchasing a new multimeter. If you would like uh, to have some topic uh, about electronics uh, covered in uh, one video, leave your comments in the doobly-doo. And uh, if you like this video, uh, click the thumb up icon. This will help uh, the channel to grow and will give me kind of a feedback uh, if you like this video. And of course, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you will be notified, you will know when a new video will be available. For now, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!